Are you leaving distance on the table with your driver? Why is loft so important? You're about to find out. Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. Today I'm joined by Jackie Johnson, also a Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. And we're going to be discussing loft today on the driver. We're actually going to be doing a pretty intensive test of a wide range of loft. And Jackie's going to be doing the hitting. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, just to see the results from different types of lofts and why, you know, based on your swing speed, that a loft might fit into your category and why it's so optimal for you. Yeah, there's definitely general trends. Generally, if you have a slower club speed, you need more loft to get the ball up in the air to generate more spin. If you have a very fast swing speed, you don't need to launch that thing as high because otherwise if you launch it really high, that ball is going to spin like crazy and you leave a lot of distance on the table. So we're going to do a wide range today. So we have, you're playing the TaylorMade Sim Max, right? Yep. Yep, so we're going to do a 9 degree head, a 10 and a half degree head, a 12 degree head, and we're also going to go to the other extreme. So if the 9 degree head, we'll turn it down to 7. And at the 12 degree head, we'll turn it up to 14. So this is going to give us a good wide range. And we'll talk about the differences in, in ball speed. We'll talk about the differences in spin, the height. And then we'll also talk about how it's important to fit to a player's attack angle as well. Because a lot of these numbers, generally speaking, you want more loft. But if your attack angle is very, very down or very, very up, you're going to have to make some modifications to the loft on the driver too, and also your, your tee height as well. So Loft on the driver is very important. So Jackie, you're going to hit some shots today. What do you think you're going to expect with all these different loft adjustments? Well, I, I certainly think that the 10 and a half is going to be the best fit for me. But when talking about the 9 degree, 7 degree, definitely going to be pretty low spinning. I'm probably going to get some more ball speed from it. But control is going to be an issue and also carry distance. Right. Um, and then you talk about the 12 and 14 degree, I think I'm going to lose, you know, 10, 15 yards on distance for sure on those. And I might be able to get some good tight dispersion circles, but I'm going to lose some distance because of that. And it's going to spin a little bit more. Yeah, exactly. And you brought up an interesting word, like carry distance. If you're playing at a golf course where the course is wet yeah. or there's dew on the ground in the, in the morning, and you don't carry, you have a, you kind of hit a worm burn and the ball runs pretty far, but you're leaving a lot of distance on the table when the course is wet. So that's why loft is your friend with the driver. Yeah. Jackie, you ready to hit some drives? Yeah, let's go. So Jackie, what loft are we going to start with first? I got ten and a half right now. Ten and a half, and that's yeah. what you've been playing, right? Yep. All right, let's see some drives. There you go. Nice. Curved. Look at look how straight that shot is. That was good. That was hit well. Okay, Jackie, let's talk numbers with the 10 and a half degree driver. Uh, first thing I'm seeing, your ball speed about 130 miles an hour. It's pretty solid there for about 90 mile an hour club speed. Uh, launch angle was 16.8, spin rate 2308 going about 237 yards. Uh, we'll notice dispersion kind of left to right it was pretty consistent. We'll notice, yeah, that last shot you missed a little to the right, but otherwise pretty yeah. consistent distances every single time. I want to bring up something really interesting here, and we know this is the loft that you play with your driver. Ping has like an optimal launch and um, spin rate chart based on your attack angle. And your attack angle is very close to four degrees. Mm -hmm. So that particular chart, actually says that your launch angle should be about 16 degrees and your spin rate should be about 2300. The actual numbers here it says uh, we're looking at 16.6 and 2300 RPMs which should give you about 225 yards. So pretty good pretty good fitting there. I think you'd uh, know a thing or two about fitting people which, yeah. is, which, is, which is fun to see. Uh, what do you got any other feedback on the 10 and a half degree driver? Yeah, I mean, I hit four shots that were ideal. You know, that one I left the face open a little bit. That's why it went off to the right. But overall, still getting, like, the dispersion circle from distance is really good. And that's why I play it. It's just because I know generally how far I'm going to carry it and how far I'm going to hit it total. 
Um, but fun to see that, you know, with the attack angle I have, all the numbers are pretty spot on and that I'm getting the most out of the driver that I can, so. Right, and then the last piece I'll add here too, landing angle, when I'm fitting a driver, 30 to 40 degrees is kind of the, the ballpark number yeah. for, for landing angle with, with driver. So you're at 37. So you, the fact that you uh, had a high launch, low spin, a little higher landing angle where that spin rate stayed down, you're able to actually outperform what Ping yeah. was saying with, with their chart and you're hitting 237 yards, which is, which is awesome. Yeah. Okay, it's time to play around with other different settings here. Let's go to one extreme. What do you want to do first? Uh, let's do 12. Let's do 12? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Hit it well. Ball speed was pretty good. Yeah, you smoked that one. But we'll notice the spin rate jumped a little bit. Yep. Ah. Uh, Slightly tall little pull. And yep. when you get to pull it a little bit, you can hit present that face a little bit more closed. So yeah. it was negative 1.6. We notice what happened to your ball speed there. It jumped a little bit. This is because you delofted the club a little bit. Mm hmm. All right. Yeah, that's would, that should be more typical there of what I would see. Yeah, I mean those those are some pretty good swings that you just put together. If we take a look at the numbers and see if there's anything different. Well, it's, <laughs> your club speed's great. So 89, 89 right there. Yeah. We actually got just a touch more ball speed, and that's just that one shot. Remember that one? You got 132 ball speed. That yeah. face was a little bit closed. That's that one over there on the left. That's going to bring the numbers up a, a little bit there overall. But otherwise, if we look at your averages here, you can see that bull launched actually just a touch lower. That one there launched at 13.8, 17.9, 15.2, 15.4, and 16.9. So once again, this one outlier is bringing that launch angle down just a little bit on you there at two. Yep. Um, and then also, it brought this, maybe it didn't quite spin quite as much as we were thinking. It did spin almost 300 RPMs more overall. If you mentioned to me this particular shot, you're like, yeah, that's maybe what I would expect with yeah. 12 degrees aloft. Yeah. It wasn't bad though. I don't, I don't mind the 12 degrees aloft for you. Uh, sometimes loft is, is good to get the ball to carry a little bit further with the exception of that one that you pulled over here to the left. Notice that thing only flew at 68 feet in the air. There's more potential to get the ball to possibly carry a little further. You'll notice here that this one that you hit really well that carried 217 yards. Okay. But yeah, loft is definitely your friend. You'll notice you're kind of around about the same with the 12 degrees and 10 and a half degrees. Okay, so I want to go to one other extreme now, and let's go to let's go to that nine, but put it at minus two at seven. So I think we're going to see some interesting numbers if we're taking a look at at this. But uh, 12 degrees was great. Yep. All right, well, Jackie, first thing I'm noticing here is you were really fighting that one to the right. Well, notice this yeah. one here, you worked really hard to try and get that thing to turn over. Your face angle was still just a little bit open. So spin rate was definitely less, but if we take a look at that face angle, it was a little bit more open. Now, why would that be the case? Why would there be uh, more of a tendency to miss to the right with the, uh, the seven degree setting? Uh, you know, going down two degrees of loft is gonna open up the face. So that's the downside to um, you know, making that adjustment is just that knowing that, hey, it's going to open it up a little bit, got to try to work a little bit harder to hit it straighter. Um, on the flip side, if you're adding loft, it's going to be a little bit more draw bias. So you know, I would suspect when we go to that 14 degree and loft it up, I'm going to have more of a draw uh, pull type of tendency too. So. Right. And that's why it's important to fit to the right loft on the driver first and then make those adjustments. Because what you are doing is you're, you're, you're adjusting that face angle, really. Yeah. Yes, the loft's changing, but the face angle is either opening or closing. And if you have a tendency to miss the ball a certain direction and all of a sudden you open that face or close that mm -hmm. face, it can make it even harder on you there too. You can definitely notice that you had a tendency there just to kind of miss it all to, to the right. It was consistent. It was consistently yeah. over there to the right. More consistent than I thought it was going to be, so. Right. Um, you'll notice, yeah, you didn't pick up really any carry distance or anything like that. Uh, you did pick up ball speed. And that was what you would expect with less loft on the club. More chance for more ball speed. 
Uh, launch angle, once again, it's really interesting that your launch angle has been staying around about the same overall, but we do notice here is the spin. The spin rate kind of dropped a little bit. Yep. Uh, and now we're talking about that, that chase out with that lower spin overall. But yeah, I would say little, too little spin there for you. Um, yeah, we would say, take a look at the height here. You can see how the ball is actually flying about 10 feet lower in, in the air. So you're getting more ball speed, but it's harder for you to turn it over, is what we're seeing with the setting from nine put down to two degrees to, to seven. I always like to bring up one other number, uh, one other thing here to take a look at, and that's uh, this chart right here. So this is a good example here of, of kind of showing why we need a little bit more loft. So we can see here, if, I, if you're playing too little loft on your driver, notice here, launch angle's great, ball speed, speed's great, but then you take a look at the spin rate and this height. It's right at the, at the bottom end to optimize, to get you to carry that ball a little bit further, and we can notice we can get you a little bit more distance overall. We need more loft to get the spin rate up and to get that height up. Yeah, well, let's try the nine degree. All right. Oh, that's better. Nope. Okay, so uh, nine degrees aloft. Pretty straight. You yeah. Got that one, that last shot here, that where your small carry distance was the furthest of them all overall, and it was up there for guys the total distance there too. Uh, tell me about nine degrees. Uh, it looked like you had a couple of swings where maybe a little, little more left and a little more right in, in there, but uh, otherwise. Yeah, I think that was kind of user error, just me kind of being a little bit off rhythm. But um, no, I mean it. It honestly, it seemed very similar to my ten and a half, which I didn't expect in terms of like height and launch. Like I expected it to go maybe a little bit lower. Yep. Um, but I think if you look at it, yeah, it's very similar. Sixteen and a half launch, sixteen point eight. Right, I'm looking spins. at the spin here, and I would have expected spin maybe more like 2200 RPMs of yeah. spin versus your 2308 with the 10 and a half. Now, a lot of that's going to be hit location, mm -hmm. going to be user error as well. If you catch a little on the heel, catch a little on the toe. Yep. I'll just say, generally speaking, less loft on the driver, you're going to see less spin, and more loft on the driver, you're going to see more spin. But there's always going to be the occasional outliers in there with regards to catching on the toe or the heel, which is going to influence a lot of spin or not much spin. Yeah, I think the, the number that sparks out to me is honestly the consistency so far. Ten and a half is like pretty dang consistent. So you look at um, the not only like the launch, but the you know spin consistency, ball speed consistency, all pretty low with that ten and a half. Uh, total distance and carry distance are definitely more consistent too. So, but I mean, yeah, it's interesting that a lot of these, I mean, there are some differences for sure, but a lot of it comes down to how consistent you can be too. Right. You know, yeah. so. And uh, uh, more loft on the club's going to make you be more consistent. Yeah. It's, you don't have to try and swing and manipulate to get the ball up in the air. Yeah. Well, I mean, when I was testing out drivers to begin with, um, you know, I thought about going to the nine degree head just because I was getting maybe a little bit more distance, but I ended up going with the 10 and a half because I felt like I could swing at it and be more consistent with my miss hits than with the nine degree, which is kind of what this is showing. So, right. yeah. Okay, so right now we've got a range of spin from 1900 to 2600. I want to finish up here with that 12 degree head plus two, so close to 14 degrees of loft and see what happens. See if we get that spin rate closer to, I would guess it's gotta be closer to 3000 when we're, when we're done with hitting that shot, that club, but uh, it's gonna be interesting to see the wide range of spin and launch and distance. Dead straight. Wasn't much spin on that one, but it was dead straight. <laughs> one foot of curve to the yeah, left. Yeah, I kind of hit the, I kind of hit the ground a little bit. You can see my attack angle at five degrees. Yeah. Kind of bounced up, but still good miss. Yeah. There you, there go. you go. There's your, uh, there's your high launch and, and high spin with more loft on the yeah. club. That's pretty. That's what I would expect right there.
I'm not gonna lie, you've hit it like dead straight every single time with a tiny little drawer. Yeah. I, I gotta take I gotta show you this. I'm gonna probably jinx you for your last swing, but I wanna look at the curve on those on those shots here. You got one at 20 feet to the left to the left, and then you got one at four, four, and one. Those might be the straightest <laughs> shots I think I've ever seen. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. Let's finish up here. Look at that, put you under the spotlight there and you've delivered a nice little straight shot again. Yeah, so there's a couple shots here, we'll notice the spin rate was a little bit lower. Uh, you can see one here, one here, but then you'll notice those three here, they're a little bit higher. Uh, could be toe strike, could be catching the ground a little bit, which is delivering that lower yeah. spin. But you'll notice the wide range and definitely is spinning a little bit more overall. Yeah, okay. I, w I would say... That's going to be the downfall of having more loft for like someone with, you know, I swung a little bit less probably because I was, I don't know, scared I was going to, I don't know. It's actually not that far low, I guess. But I, I would say like the tendency to draw is, I mean, I like that little draw, but the problem is that, you know, you're going to have those shots that I'm going to hit you know, certain spots on the driver because of that, because of that, you know, more draw bias tendency. I kind of see this, like when I test out ping stuff as well, is that spin does go down, but then when I am going to hit it in the middle, it's just going to pop up and, you know, you're going to have that wide range of consistency and distance. And I think that's the major key here is like the consistency, but I did hit it straight for the most part. I mean, right. I mean, not bad. this, this screen is always fun to look at. We can see here the different settings. So finishing up here with 14 degrees, yes, a little bit more draw bias. Yeah. Everything was left of center. And the ones that stay pretty straight, they just had a tiny little bit of curve to the left. We take a look at the, uh, the seven degree setting. So basically a seven degree ad adjustment there, we'll notice the purple consistently over there to the, to the right side. So your dispersion is definitely influenced by that face angle change on, on the driver. Mm -hmm which is always fun to see. Okay, so I want to break down these numbers a little bit more. So your club speed, basically 89 miles an hour for each one here. That's now re rank ball speed from highest to, to lowest. Or So we can see here, you did generate the highest amount of ball speed with the lowest driver lofted setting. That makes the most sense. What's interesting here is these three here were all very, very close together. You got the nine, the 10 and a half, and the 12. Pretty close, you're talking 0.6 separation between those three lofts. I would have expected the nine to be just a little bit up higher here. Now I am seeing this plus or minus number, a consistency number, yeah. so that tells me there's an outlier in there. Yeah. So we can look here and see the nine degrees and see if there's one there that's all of a sudden yeah, really, really, really low. There you go, right there. So if you're going to take that one out, that, that outlier, now you'll notice here, yes, the ball speed is faster with less loft on the yeah. driver. Um, and then you can kind of see 12, 10 and a half, and then clearly the 14 degree loft had the least amount of ball speed. I'm gonna get that one back in here for now. Uh, there we go. Okay, uh, we take a look at launch angle. Lowest loft launch angle was the lowest. But then once again, these ones here are all kind of very close ag together again. And then 14 degrees loft, higher launch angle. Now, what's interesting is there's, we got a seven degree separation, but you'll notice there's only a range of 2.2 .2 degrees. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of a hit location. Your attack angle stayed pretty close to the same. We're talking between 3.6 and 4.5. So within a, a degree, so that's going to be hit location for sure, where we catch the ball in the face that influences that, that, that launch angle. Um, spin rate, see if we've got that same general trend. Uh, lowest amount of spin, seven degrees loft. Highest amount of spin, 14 degrees loft. We noticed we had a couple there where we're lower spinning at 14, but then you had those three that were fairly high. So you can see that consistency number was a little bit higher overall. Um, distance, this is, this is Interesting look at the carry distance, you'll notice pretty close on carry distance, but then that spin rate is going to influence the total distance. So you can see 
the lowest amount of loft chased out the furthest. Now that's great if the, green, if the fairways are firm. Yeah. The greens aren't, aren't firm, then we might want to be more in something ar around this area here so that we can get that, that carry distance up a little bit and get the thing to get a little, go a little bit further overall. And then 14 degrees of loft, you lost, uh, you lost 15 yards by switching between the 9 set to 7 and the 12 set to 14. Yeah. That's a big, that's a big difference. That's, uh, that's one, one and a half clubs. Uh, you, instead of hitting your nine iron in, you might be hitting your eight mm. iron into the green, or you might be hitting your seven iron in the green now too. So loft is really, really important overall. Uh, and then I want to, I mean, so you can see general trends overall too. The landing angle, actually perfect landing angle. Look at this from nine, seven, nine, 10.5, 12, 14. It's in order. So between 32.4 and 41. I mentioned that range of 30 to 40 degrees. Now that's a wide range. We'll notice these three, the 9, 10 and a half and 12, we're kind of close to that 35, which is going to be a little bit more optimal, mm -hmm. as long as that spin rate stays down. Height, exact same kind of trend you see. This is the, wa the one that I'm interested in, is the curve. Look, at, look how that changes based on the, on the loft on the driver. Yep. So seven degrees, you had average curve of 26 feet to the right. And then as we gradually move more and more loft on the driver, you can see that the last two, the 12 degrees and the 14 degrees, you're actually able to draw the ball. Yep. Yeah. So you have any other following comments here, Jackie, when you're, when you're fitting golfers with regards to loft? Is this kind of the, the general trend that you see in, in the fitting bay? Yeah, I would say, you know, as you have swing speeds that are less than what I'm at, you're going to have uh, golfers that are going to fit in the 12 and 14 degree uh, loft. I mean, 14 is, you don't get a lot of that, to be honest. A lot of golfers are going to be in 11 or 12, but you are going to have that occasional um, golfer that does hit maybe a little bit too down on the ball that you might have to have a little bit more loft for the slower swing speeds. Right. And you also have people that do swing faster than me, but hit down on the ball that need that extra loft too. So I think it kind of just depends. You know, we were talking a little bit about like attack angle. Um, obviously the more you hit up on the ball, the less spin that you're going to generate yep. um, with that loft. So I think there are some other factors than just purely swing speed. So I have fit people into higher lofted drivers based on their attack angle um, as well. So I think that, Honestly, I was kind of surprised by the 12 degree driver. I thought it was going to be maybe a little bit more spinny and it competed all right. Um, but yeah, to me, I, I still look at that 10 and a half and just the consistency that it brings, especially with the low numbers and the carry and total yardage. And like, obviously that's what I want as you know, the type of golfer I am is make sure I'm hitting fairways and know how far I'm going to hit that driver um, and not have that dispersion circle be a wide range. Um, so I think it's a matter of, you know, obviously reaching those optimal numbers across the board like we talked about, but also how consistent, how consistent am I uh, and, you know, how can I hit fairways? I mean, th there's a couple different reasons as to why loft's important, but you can see here, like, distance is a key factor, dispersion's a key factor. So those are just a couple reasons why I think getting fit for a driver is really important just because I, a lot of people come into the store and they're like, oh, yep, I need a nine degree because I swing fast or I need a ten and a half because I don't. And it's not always about that. So definitely getting fit is really important because we can analyze all this data to make sure you have the right one. Right. I love fitting to attack angle and, and taking a look at the spin rate by changing the lofts around. Uh, I've also done this test as well. Uh, you can find that, that video on our YouTube channel. Uh, it was posted a few months ago, so that's for a golfer that has faster club speed. If you're looking for that video, make sure to check that out. Jackie has club speed around about 90 miles an hour. Mine's about 110, so we can, we can see a wide range. And we found very, very similar results. The only difference was when I had more speed, I spun the ball a lot more with more loft on the driver yeah. because more club speed is going to generate more speed. So. So golfers, if you love this content, make sure to let us know what loft you're playing on your driver. Send us a comment. Also like this video and subscribe to our channel.